Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to talk a lot about stretchy cords. I'm going to show you some specific grips that are going to tear your fingers apart, but we're going to talk a lot about why they sound so great and how you can incorporate them into your playing as well. There'll be at least 10 chords, a couple of real killers as well that you're going to enjoy uh, toward the end that uh, you can watch me grimace as I fumble around trying to get my fingers around it. So I feel like I should mention here at the start as well that I have a really, really tiny little finger. I'm sure some of you are going to be going, I don't know if you're going to be able to do them stretchy cords because my hands are too small, whatever. Like, I, I, I have a little stump. My little finger is absolutely tiny compared to the rest. It doesn't even come up to the joint in my third finger there. So I've always battled with it. You know, I, I still remember the first time I tried to play a police song, the Every Breath You Take, uh, and it's got that stretchy cord in there. I just remember, like, trying to figure out it was like this... Then I had to move that little finger up, like... And that's, I mean, even still, like, the ones that involve, like, just a little finger stretch like that, that's just really, really awkward for me. I've, I really struggle. Interesting, though, that uh, I guess Andy Summers does, too, because he... Uh, the actual one is played without the... Uh, without having to do that stretch anyway, but the thing that's really interesting about that chord i think more interesting than the chord itself is why it sounds cool and it's the fact that a lot of these stretchy chords have a lot of dissonance that is tone and semitone uh distances between notes that kind of clash so that particular chord has this in it this note the b to the c sharp so in the key of a and if we play it so it's this this clashy thing that actually makes it kind of still it's really hard now the same thing actually the minor version of this chord has this in it a semitone between the b and the c this beautiful sounding chord with that in the middle of it but it doesn't sound like that does it in the middle of the chord and it's this dissonance that happens a lot in these stretchy grips and it's really what makes them sound fantastic and it's something that we're going to find is a pretty common theme through most of these chords. I'm going to talk a little bit about my journey with them as well because there's things, you know, I've had to face some of it just straight out and just practice the life out until I got it. You know, the uh, Moonlight in Vermont by Johnny Smith is one of those songs where I never thought I'd be able to play it and then one day I was just like, no, I'm going to do a lesson on this song and I'm going to practice it until I can do it and I managed to get there. So... Any of you guys with the, the small finger problems that are like, you know, I can't do it. Perseverance can usually find a way around all of those things. And sometimes you'll be amazed at what your hand can actually do with a little bit of practice. The next big stretchy chord that I remember encountering on my own journey was this one in Always With You, Always With Me by Joe Satriani. This uh, 11 chord. remember that was that was a big battle again and of course we got this little semitone here between the D sharp and the E and that's what's making that chord so beautiful and this, this is a really nice one almost any time you've got a substitute for a B if you're doing a ballad you can explore it that way it's just it's just a regular B major chord with a little bit of dissonance in there really like that one so that's a really nice stretchy one should call it out as well so you know uh, exactly what frets we're playing that's the seventh fret nothing on the fifth string and then nine eight five fantastic chord now just a little bit after that i was also digging in a bit of alan holdsworth and i remember coming across this chord which is a fantastic i can't remember the name of the song merry-go-round something merry-go-round i think uh but this is a really interesting chord grip as well it's neither major nor minor uh it's a root note second flat seven four so it's like a seven chord with a with a sus two and a sus four now something really interesting happens here especially if i try and do it the wrong order if i go there the second the fourth and then try and put my third finger down i can't get it down behind the fret and there's a little trick here uh, very often if i've got to reach out with my little finger i get the rest of the chord first now reaching out my third finger kind of folds over a little bit in a way that i wouldn't actually be able to put it down in that particular uh if it was last down so sometimes you might find with chords that you've got to put your fingers down in a certain order in order to get the chord ringing out correctly or be able to get your fingers in position sometimes that's a bit 
frustrating if they're not in the order that you want to play the notes in. But like I said, sometimes you just have to try and find a ways around, you know, and I think for that particular one works fantastic. The frets for that one, nothing on the thicker string, then 12, 9, 12, 15. I guess it's just a substitute for any sort of a dominant A chord, an A chord with a dominant seventh, so it could be a, like a minor seven or a regular dominant seventh, not a major seventh, because that would have this sound. Uh, uh, there. Uh, it's a bit weird though, major seven with a fourth in it's never a nice thing, but you should experiment and just see what things you find whenever you try these sort of chords, like play the actual chord I've given you, but just try moving the fingers around, swapping around, you'll often find some pretty interesting things. Um, next couple of chords I want to talk about also have this dissonance thing, but they're also kind of close voiced, I think is the is the term for it. Uh, these are both from the, I, I first encountered them in the Johnny Smith uh, Moonlight in Vermont thing. Uh, beautiful chord grip. So the first one, I'll do it in the key of A. This is an an A6 chord. It's a little bit stretchy again, not too bad for me because a little finger to third finger isn't too difficult and the rest of my hands kind of adapted to get extra stretchy in the other places. So this is nothing on the thicker string, 12, 11, 9 and 7. Now this is just like a regular A triad, like from a C shaped bar chord, but we've got now this uh, tone gap here between the fifth and the sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. Root third, fifth, six. It's a lovely, lovely grip. It's not too bad there. You try and knock it down a little bit. <laughs> get further. All of these chords are a lot easier further up the neck you get there. That's, oh, maybe I could do it. Can I do it? I can just about do an E flat six like that. Yeah, I can do it. Little finger is like... Little fingers should be closer to the fret, but I can get the note trigger now. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, that is a sixth chord. Definitely a great one to explore. Really useful in jazz or in lots of solo arrangements, particularly if the sixth is in the melody. That's where you'd find that one a particularly useful one. Uh, a pairing of that is one that I find a lot harder. Any of you with a longer little finger won't struggle at all. This is just a minor seventh chord, a bog standard minor seventh. Root, flat third, fifth, flat seven. Yeah. Ah, oh, come on. I told you I find this one sticky because there's I need that, that stretch there between little finger and third finger. I find that one a lot harder. But this is a really nice grip again if you've got a minor seven chord with the flat seven in the melody line that you're trying to bring that note out. This is a really good one. Uh, the frets, nothing on the thicker string. 12, 10, 9, 8. If you want to get clever, you could drop that first finger back. And then you've got a minor 6. Minor 7. Minor 6. Oh, that's stretchy. I can feel that. This is like doing yoga for the hand. Except kind of more painful. God, yeah. That's a, 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 a pretty sticky one. Um, Something else, like I, I kind of touched on it before, uh, is the idea of just experimenting a bit when you're doing these. And uh, one that I remember finding, I can't remember if it was from a song or I stumbled upon it myself, is this minor 6, 7, minor 13, I suppose you could call it. Uh, this is uh, 12, uh, nothing on the thicker string, 12, 10, 11, 8. So we've got this nice little semitone clash there between the 6th and the flat 7. to be a minor chord, a minor, yeah, substitute for a minor chord, minor seven chord. Or, but it's, it's got that really lovely semitone clash involved. So the semitone clash thing is something that I found really interesting for a long time and I spent a good deal of portion of my time exploring chords, looking for chords that had that clash, like how can I, what different ways can I incorporate this semitone or tone clash in a chord? Uh, one that I particularly like has both uh, and it's this one, this is a minor 9 chord, an A minor 9, I'll put the low bass note on. This is open, but it's movable if you take away the... Uh, there's the root note on the thinner string as well. But just adding the bass note in for effect. So there's nothing on the thicker string, then open, 9, 5, 8, 5. 
and this has a semitone here between the B and the C and a tone between the G and the A. Experiment with it when if you've got any of these chords, just have a play about and see what you can come up with. I'm just wondering as well if I can make this a major version. Ow! This is the first time I've played this chord. That's interesting. Wow, it hurt. That's painful. Just discover a new chord in the middle of a video lesson. Where hey? So now we've got two tones and here. Ow! That's a real contortion effort for me. Man, my hand's going to feel pretty sore tomorrow. So there's another one. That would be a major, uh, no, a dominant seventh. So it'd be a ninth chord, an A9 chord, actually. God, yeah. that feels, it's kind of hurts so good, that kind of thing. It's just so I don't kill myself, I'm going to do a couple of uh, slightly less stretchy, but very, very useful that have got a lot of this nice dissonance in it. Uh, first one. It's this one. Still not a slouchy one. This is uh, nothing on the thickest two strings. Fifth fret, sixth fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. I would think of this as kind of a G with a sharp and 11 as well. Like there's a kind of a G triad, but we've got the sharp 11. Really like the sound of that. That's just semitone again. But having that harmony at the top there. Need to write a song with that in it. That's fantastic. Really, really like that. You often get the 11th, like the clash with the third seems to work particularly well when you're looking for dissonance in a stretchy chord. So that's one I would definitely recommend uh, checking out. So there's another one kind of similar to it. That same kind of semitone gap in the middle there. Uh, this one I kind of think of as an A11. You could, again, you could have lots of different bass notes on this. Uh, just popped a, a low A on there. So this one is nothing on the thickest two strings. Fifth fret, sixth fret with this, the little finger, third fret with the first finger, third finger down on the root note on the on the top. This one's too bad but it's a it's a good uh, it's a decent one okay I saved the best to last this is uh, another Alan Holdsworth chord and it's yeah there's there's a pair of them and they're really horrible so the first one is this now this is a D uh, add nine so there's the root note a fifth below it there's the ninth there's the major third the bass note just to really really just the, the harmony having this clash and that clash all together a semitone followed by tone sorry tone followed by tone that's really nice but it's got an ugly brother like a, an even worse one and that is the minor version so this is like I said the fifth the root the ninth the major third, we can make it a minor. By stretching the first finger back now, I'll probably be, there we go. I got it. Oh my God. That is one hell of a chord. My third finger feels like it's about to break. That's 12th fret, 12th fret, 9th fret, 6th fret. That's absolutely as stretchy as I can possibly go. Oh man, that, yeah, okay, this lesson is officially going to knack on my hand, at least, thank God it's a Friday and I've got tomorrow off, um, but look, I'm, uh, part of the reason for this was just to have a bit of fun with some stretchy chords, but also, stretchy chords are beautiful, the, this, when you get a big stretch and you can find a nice dissonance that you don't get in a regular chord, but particularly for ballads, they really work great. Uh, there's a few songs, Tears in the Rain by Joe Satriani is a really nice one to check out that's got the l a whole series of uh, kind of not horribly difficult stretches, but, but uh, um, 
yeah, well, it, it's kind of a nice musical example of doing that sort of stuff. Definitely checking out any Alan Holdsworth stuff. His chord vo- grips were just insane. He had enormous fingers and could do these things that were just like for humans like me. So, like, oh, really? You exp- like those last couple of chords, they're beautiful and I like playing them for, as a bit of fun, but I don't think I'd actually put one in a song because getting to and from it would require so much practice and hard work and uh, potential difficulty on stage and all of that sort of stuff. Or if you're having a bad day, it's likely to go wrong, that kind of thing. But uh, it's definitely something to explore. And I would encourage you to start off with these grips that I've given you here today and see what you can do to them because there are many, many more like this that contain this dissonance. Uh, particularly if any of you into jazz chord melody, you'll find that you can really do some beautiful things. Most of the these were harmonically fairly simple uh, just to make them useful for more people if you get into really s- super complex harmonic structures then they become less useful they've got to be placed perfectly and specifically otherwise they're not really going to work but uh, like I really hope you had a bit of fun with this I'll put to, uh, all of the core boxes and stuff up over on the website I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you'll take care of yourselves out there bye bye